A large fraction of physics is concerned with waves or periodic variations of some physical quantity. Typical examples include sound waves, electromagnetic waves, mechanical waves, for example vibrations on a string, thermal or heat waves. We'll see later on in this semester that quantum mechanics uses waves to describe the properties of particles. So far we've met waves that are described by a sine function. This might be a function of time or distance, or in the case of a propagating wave it can be a function of both time and distance. The sine function is a very convenient description of a wave or periodic vibration, as we can write down a very compact mathematical expression. The sine wave is often the solution of a differential equation, for example simple harmonic motion, and sine functions and also cosine functions have the property that they can be differentiated or integrated any number of times. However, in nature we find more complex periodic functions. There are an infinite number of examples, but common ones are square waves and triangular waves. And so we have to ask how we can deal with these functions mathematically. We'll see in the first part of the course that we can describe any periodic function, that could be a function of either time or distance, as a sum of cosine and sine functions. This is known as a Fourier series. The sine and cosine functions have a frequency either equal to that of the original function, that's called the fundamental frequency, or integer multiples of this frequency. These are known as the harmonics of the fundamental frequency. Fourier analysis also provides a technique for finding out how much of each sine and cosine component is needed to describe the function. This is given by the a and b coefficients. We'll see that in general a Fourier series will contain an infinite number of terms. In the lectures we'll work through a number of examples where we'll find the Fourier series of a number of simple periodic functions and we'll also see how the concepts of symmetry can help us simplify these calculations. Here we see an example of where we might need to use a Fourier series. This is the case of a system, an oscillating system, driven by an oscillating force. If the force varies sinusoidally, then we can write down the differential equation. On the left-hand side, we have terms that represent the response of the system. We have the acceleration, the damping term, and then the restoring force term. And then on the right-hand side, we have a sine function that describes our force. We saw in year one how we could solve this differential equation. It's not too difficult, and it predicts, amongst other things, the concepts of resonance. If, however, we have a more complicated driving force, for example, a square wave, then we need to modify the differential equation. We can replace the right-hand side with the relevant Fourier series for a square wave. I've taken this description from the lecture notes. We can see now that we have an infinite number of terms on the right-hand side. However, because this is a linear differential equation, the full solution is just the sum of the solutions to each term in the Fourier series. So in principle, we can still solve this equation and calculate the response of the system. Finally, we're going to use an audio signal generator and an oscilloscope to demonstrate the concept of Fourier series. In the following examples, there will be two parts of the screen. The upper part shows the signal plotted as a function of time. The lower part is a plot of the frequencies present in the signal. This is obtained from an analysis by the oscilloscope. In the current case, the signal is a simple sine wave, a frequency close to 500 hertz, so there is only one frequency present. There's only one feature in the lower plot. In the following screenshots, we'll switch on the signal generator and then change the shape of the signal, starting from a sine wave, moving to something that approximates a square wave, then a triangular wave, and finally a sawtooth. All these waves have the same fundamental frequency. For functions other than a sine wave, you'll see that other frequency components are present, as shown by additional features in the lower screen. These features always appear at integer multiples of the fundamental frequency, 500 Hz, but for the different functions, they have different amplitudes. The different harmonics have different amplitudes depending on the original function. The different functions will also sound different as your brain is sensitive to the harmonic content of the sound. 
A sine wave is perceived as a pure sound with only one frequency present. However, any other periodic wave is perceived differently because it contains a different number of frequencies. And this is the reason why different musical instruments playing the same note will sound differently because the harmonic content is always different.